Okay, Dick, can you tell me what you were all doing on the 15th, the day before the 16th? Were you just getting ready for the tour? Well, yeah, we were just, uh, on the 15th, we were just kind of sitting around, uh, doing, you know, everybody was doing different things, uh, doing a lot of talking. Uh, you know, I spent, uh, a lot of time with uh, with Elvis at night, sitting and talking with him and telling him about the tour, as, as I usually did. And, uh, you know, just uh, doing the prep work on, on stuff, you know. Uh-huh. So when was the last time that you talked to Elvis? Well, I left him about, uh, I don't know, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning on, wow. on the 16th. Uh-huh. He was going to go down and play racquetball, and uh, I told him, I said, you know, uh, I got my stuff in the car. Up, you, you want me to play with you? And he said, no. He was, Billy and Joe Smith and uh, Ginger was going to go down there and play racquetball. He said, you go on home and get some sleep. You got a long, you know, tough tour coming up here. So mm-hmm. I left and went home. No, okay. Um, went, so went to bed. You know. Yeah. So now on August the 16th, I mean, I know we've done this before in your other one, but it's just working up to it. How did you uh, hear? Well, I had just gotten up and I uh, was drinking a cup of coffee and starting to pack uh, clothes for it when I got a phone call from Tommy Henley. And uh, Tommy told me, uh, he just said, uh, you need to get down to the hospital. And I said, uh, uh, is it bad? He said, yeah, it's bad. So... He hung up, uh, I threw some clothes on and jumped in my car and flew down to the hospital. Mm-hmm. So what happened at the hospital? Well, I went into the uh, emergency room there and they were still working on on uh, Elvis. And uh, uh, I was there when they pronounced him dead. And, uh, uh, Marion Cock was there. She went over and kissed his forehead and mm-hmm. kind of brushed the hair out of his face a little bit. And then uh, uh, I took him up to the morgue and uh, had uh, Al Strada was there, as I remember. And Al stood outside after we put him in the morgue and kind of stood guard on the morgue there until we could get the police department people over there. Mm-hmm. Now, did Vernon go to the hospital? No, Vernon did not go to the hospital. Vernon was stayed at home at Graceland. I then met with uh, Maurice Elliott, and uh, who was the administrator of the hospital, and we uh, sent the hotel secure hospital security up to the morgue and uh, to work with Al, and uh, I took the. Uh, request for an autopsy out to uh, uh, got it from uh, Maurice and took it out to uh, Graceland and had Vernon sign it and I witnessed it and took it back uh, to the hospital which well what that did was that uh, in, instead of having the, the county do the autopsy which would have made it public record mm-hmm. uh, Vernon did uh, signed and requested the autopsy and paid for it. I forget what it was, maybe three hundred and fifty, four hundred dollars, something like that. I'm not sure exactly what the amount was anymore. But since uh, the family paid for it and had it done, it remained private and was not subject to anybody because uh, I didn't want anybody seeing photos of him like you saw John Kennedy and. Mm-hmm. You know, other people whose autopsies have been public uh, information. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and that that's why that autopsy is still private today, is because I did that at that time. Yeah, no, uh, and, and I'm sure if you didn't, it wouldn't be so private. No, so oh, no. Did you guys uh, stay with them all night long, or that was the hospital security stayed with them all night long? No, we... Uh, uh, we kept the hospital security on it all night long until they finished the autopsy, and then he was transferred to uh, the uh, uh, 
Memphis funeral home. Mm -hmm. And we had police uh, police on the funeral home there. I, I'm I'm not sure whether they did the autopsy there or did it at the funeral home. Yeah, they usually do it at the hospital. But uh, we took, uh, and as soon as he was transferred, and I don't remember the exact time he was transferred, but as soon as he was transferred, we uh, uh, had uh, Memphis Police Department personnel on duty at the funeral home mm -hmm. while they took care of him. Was there a crowd at the funeral home at all? You know, Joe, I, I don't know. I was never at the funeral home. Okay. okay. I had other things to, to do at, uh, uh, at Graceland, and uh, I knew Memphis PD was on duty there at the funeral home, and they were would you know take care of any problems, and I never heard of any problems. So mm -hmm. I just, uh, there, there certainly wasn't a very big crowd if there was anybody there. Yeah. Uh, Dick, who picked out the casket? Vernon did. Now, did he did he pick out the same casket on purpose as the one as uh, Gladys's? Yes, yes, he wanted them in matching caskets. Uh huh. Uh, now, Vernon, did you Vernon, to mine? I I don't ever recall uh, Vernon ever going to the funeral home. That was all done by uh, either telephone or the people from uh, Memphis Funeral Home coming to Graceland. Oh, that's nice. That's good that they did that. Yeah. Now, uh, whose idea was it for the fans to see Elvis? Was that Vernon's? Well, I went. Uh, I went and asked Vernon what he wanted, and uh, he said, "Well, he would." He said, "I'd, I'd like to have uh, the fans be able to come by and 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 uh, pay their respects." And I, he said, "Can we do that?" And I said, "Yes, we can do it. We'll set him here and." In the doorway, and they can pass by. I said, "We'll just uh, take some precautions uh, so that uh, you know there are no pictures of him in the caskets." And and uh, uh, that was set up uh, uh, something Vernon wanted. You know. Mm -hmm. Did Did you ever think that you might have saw the person that got that damn picture? You know, they question now that that's even the, a real picture. Well, no, that was taken inside, and it was not taken during the, the public viewing. It was taken inside Graceland in the, in the uh, at the time that the family was there paying their respects. Oh God! And it was uh, uh, the National Enquirer had had purchased three uh, sixteen millimeter. Uh, small cameras, Minox-type cameras, and had given them to uh, the Mann boys, uh, Ricky Mann, uh, and I can't remember the other two names now, but they were cousins of, distant cousins of Elvis. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we didn't have to take security uh, insight because you don't expect yeah. family members to do that kind of stuff. My you know? God. My God, yeah, here you were worried about the fans, and she's, you know, I, had, I read in your book, too, that there was a, someone had uh, mentioned uh, the possibility of cremation. Was that, did that actually come up? I mean, I don't want you to say who, but uh, someone actually uh, said maybe that's what we should do? Well, that that, that was discussed, and, and uh, it was put to rest very quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vernon didn't want that, and it was never brought up again. Yeah, yeah. Um, when the body was then brought, you know, uh, after the um, the family had said their goodbyes and that, and then they were taking the body over to Forest Hill. When it was put into the mausoleum, was was there security for the mausoleum? Who took care of that? And was there a fear of someone trying to steal the body? No, not not originally. Uh, but we had security on the mausoleum, and uh, there was security. Uh, the cemetery uh, provided uh, some sort of roving security. There wasn't anything 24 hours a day, you know, on the door because it was locked. Uh, the casket was sealed in the mausoleum, and it's, it's crypt and, and everything. And so it was just... Uh, more or less uh, people from the cemetery.
cemetery uh, trying to keep the people from trampling other graves and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, there was a constant badger between uh, Graceland and, and the cemetery because they were complaining about all the the uh, uh, people coming in there and trampling everything and the, the flowers, dead flowers and trash that was left. Mm -hmm. But it had to be, uh, had to stay there because the uh, intent had always, always been to bring Elvis to uh, back to Graceland. But it was. Uh, there were there was certain legal requirements that had to be done in order to do that. That portion of uh, Graceland had to be rezoned uh, as a cemetery before we could move uh, Elvis and, and his mother up there, and that you know, takes a little bit of time, mm -hmm. uh, several weeks to, to accomplish. So there had to be permits and all that stuff and... Right, right. Which I didn't realize, I didn't realize that, that it was always planned to bring Elvis home to the meditation garden. Oh yeah, it, that was always, always uh, the intent. It just couldn't be done right after the funeral because we needed to have that rezoned. You can't just go bury people anywhere you want. It has to be zoned as a cemetery, and you know, it all has to be legal so that there aren't any problems with it. Mm -hmm. Was there any problems getting the permits? No, it just, it just takes time because there's certain requirements that. You know, it has to be uh, looked at by uh, this commission and, and this, this staff bureau and, and so forth. And uh, then it has to be put before the, you know, commissioners and, and uh, city people. And so all those, you know, it, it just takes time. That's all. Yeah. Now, did you set up the security to bring him back home to uh, Grace One? Yes, it did. Can you tell me a little bit about what you had to set up and... Well, the, 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 there were several requirements. First off, uh, you know, we had to get uh, meditation gardens ready, and uh, mm -hmm. the, the graves had to be uh, dug and the, uh, the vaults put in there, and, and that set up. Uh, and we wanted to do it to, where we wouldn't have a lot of crowd around, so mm -hmm. uh, I worked closely with uh, Tom Morgan from the Sheriff's Department, and between Tom and Morgan, myself, and Sam Thompson, we uh, set this up along with the Memphis Funeral Home, and then we had to get the, the uh, uh, cemetery to open uh, Gladys's grave, and uh, we opened that up the day before and moved her uh, coffin into the mausoleum and locked it in there mm -hmm. so that we could take both of them in and we waited until it got uh, got dark you know because we had had that one attempt to uh, steal uh, Elvis's body out of there which uh, we were able to foil but uh, mm -hmm. do you think that was an actual attempt I mean could they even have gotten in there with just the shovels oh, yeah. and stuff that they had Oh yeah, oh yeah. They they could have they could have broken into the to the mausoleum and uh, they probably could have chipped their way into the uh, the crypt itself and, and uh, removed the casket. Mm -hmm. Now you wanted to bring him back on the third, but I guess it's what I read in your book, you wanted to bring him back on the third, but somehow. Um, the news or something got a hold of it, and, and so you wanted to then bring them on the second, but yet then you had problems with the uh, funeral parlor. Well, the problems weren't necessarily with the funeral problem. The problems were with the, the cemetery. They weren't going to take it, and uh, they weren't very accommodating. They turned around and tried to... to uh, cost, uh, you know, charge more money, they, the people weren't going to work, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, they didn't, because we had to dig up one grave and then get ready to, to open the other grave up, and, mm -hmm. and they weren't going to pay overtime and so forth. You know, uh, the Memphis Funeral Home was very accommodating. They were ready okay. to do it whenever we wanted. Uh, we did change the date because the word we got word and that uh, that it might be out that we were going to move him on on the third and uh, mm -hmm. we moved it ahead a day just uh, at the very last minute which caused the cemetery to go bananas on us 
Yeah. Oh, but one quick question. Um, was I always thought that Gladys was buried in the ground. Yes, she was. Okay, so she was dug up and then moved to the mausoleum. And we, we opened the grave up, oh, okay, okay. pulled the casket up, and then moved it into the mausoleum for safekeeping. Okay. <clears throat> if I remember correctly, and I'm not sure, I, you know, it's like I said, it's been 30-some years, uh -huh. but uh, uh, I think the guys that, that uh, did the digging in the ground, you know, uh, the guy that was, uh, he wasn't going to be there that day. And we actually wanted to make the move, so he was, it was, she was opened up uh, the day before and stored and placed in for safekeeping in the, in the mausoleum itself. Okay. Were you there when they opened uh, the mausoleum, Elvis's mausoleum? Yes. That had yes. to be extremely, can you, uh, it must have been very hard on you. Well... No, it really wasn't because you don't have time to think. You're worried about is everything going to go right? Uh, you're worried about uh, uh, you know are we going to have problems with this? Uh, like I said, we had enough problems with the cemetery. We just wanted that to get over and done with. Uh, there were several sheriff's deputies there. Uh, Sam Thompson was there with me. Uh, Tom mm -hmm. Morgan. Uh, uh, if I remember the guy's name, Kendricks, I think, was the guy from the funeral home, I, if I remember correctly. And, uh, he was there, you know, and as well as people from the cemetery that were going to open the, the uh, mausoleum up in the crypt, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, everybody, you know, I mean, it, it was, it was kind of satisfying that we were going to take him back home where we could supply much better security for him and mm -hmm. and so forth and he was going home so it was it was kind of peaceful it wasn't traumatic or anything mm -hmm. like that it was just uh moving and finishing what we had originally planned and started in uh, uh like I, it would be better protection for him and uh, we wouldn't have to deal with the cemetery anymore their constant complaints and everything mm -hmm. um how was the condition of since you know, of uh, gladys's uh casket after all these years i mean she was what buried yeah, in ca casket was in, in very good shape uh, wow. uh, it was very very good shape uh, it was uh, uh, almost as good as, as uh, Elvis's. Wow. Wow. So, okay, then you're bringing them back to uh, Graceland. Something happened at the front gate, right? <laughs> Not the, I mean, the gate to the uh, cemetery. You couldn't get out? Well, they, they, you know, they closed the gate because it was after time, and we had to raise Cain about that, although they knew we were in there, they knew we were moving him, uh, they closed and locked the gate, so and left. We, had, we had to take care of that, you know. So here you are, you're at the gate with the um, the two hearses, and you're trying to be incognito. Yep. Oh, the, you kind of think maybe it was done on purpose? Well, it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Jeez. Let's put it that way. Yeah. yeah. So um, they got the gate open, and then you brought Elvis back home. Uh, who was there when they you, when when you got back to Graceland? Who was there? Well, there were uh, Vernon was there. Uh, no Patsy other Gamble. Uh -huh, no other Patsy, family members. Oh. Patsy Gamble was there. Uh, Sandy, the the uh, uh, nurse that was staying and, and living with Vernon and it was there. Uh, I think, if I remember right, uh, Uncle uh, Uncle Fester was there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there was uh, Doctor Nick was there. Dean Nicopolis was there. Uh -huh. I guess Nancy Rooks was there. Yeah, yeah. They, the, the staff was there. You know, they were they were there. Did you have a service? Uh, some brief words were said, yeah. Uh, I don't remember who said them now, but uh, brief, some brief words were said, and uh, Vernon sat uh, through the entire thing because he wasn't in, in good health, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we were quite concerned about him. We, always, we kept oxygen tanks around for him because he had uh, bad heart problems, you know. Mm -hmm. Could 
anybody steal the body now? Could you tell me, like, the security of the casket and that, if you can remember it? I mean, I read it in your book, and I just, it was, I was amazed how much you went through to make sure that that never happened. Well, not only, I, if, if I remember correctly, and, and I'm not sure that I do, but I think the casket itself weighed about 800 pounds. Uh, of course, the vault, uh, there's a concrete vault in the ground that the casket sets in. Uh, the casket itself is is uh, epoxy sealed, so it's, it would be extremely difficult to open it up. Uh, the vault and lid was placed on it, uh, and that weighed several hundred pounds of concrete that was sealed to the to the vault itself. Then there's dirt on top of that. Mm -hmm. Then there's uh, uh, about an 800 pound uh, granite slab and a 400 pound bronze marker on top of it. I, I, you know, the, the, I may be off on, on the poundage, but you mm -hmm. know, there's you know a couple of thousand. There's a ton of stuff you'd have to move to be able to get into it. Uh, to even try to get the casket out, and all of that would require more than just a shovel. You know, you'd have to have a, a crane, a hoist of some kind, and then a backhoe, and then a, you know, uh, to get down in there. Plus, there's uh, some other uh, devices that are placed in there that, if anybody went to go digging, you be able to tell that. You know, really? So, oh. Okay, no, it's good to know that there's, there's some extra security there just in case. And there is a television camera that watches the grave all the time. Uh-huh. Now, I read in the book, too, that there's some kind of strength text that when you seal the top to the bottom of the casket, it actually almost becomes one? Yep. Yeah, that's that's the epoxy or whatever it is. Uh, you know, I call it epoxy, but it's a, it's a super-duper uh, sealant that you use. You really would probably need a blowtorch to cut open the casket. Mm hmm Hmm. Um, I just wanted to ask you uh, quick, too. Some people have tried to say that Vernon had set up the... Um, to try to steal the body, but that, but we know that's not true. If, they, if you were going to move Elvis to Graceland from the beginning... Well, and, and that's correct. Vernon did not do that. He wouldn't do that. Uh, it was always the, the plan to take Elvis from uh, the cemetery uh, back to Graceland. Uh, the placing in the cemetery was just an interim uh, place for him to be at rest until such time as we got this other stuff taken care of and got the legal... Uh, changes made to to Graceland. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and Vernon did not know these other guys. Uh, I, uh, through intelligence, was uh, given the information that there were some people trying it, and these guys met in a bar and so forth and so on. And uh, Memphis PD worked very closely with me on that, mm -hmm. and we had that staked out. We knew that they were going to go, and um, unfortunately, I think Memphis jumped the gun a little quickly on it because they had broken into the mausoleum yet, but they were at the door with their tools and so forth and so on. Well, I didn't, I didn't realize they were even that close. I thought that they were trying to jump the wall to get into the cemetery, but they were right up to the mausoleum. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, they were right at the door to the mausoleum. Yes. Do you know what happened to them? I mean, what I mean, what did they get out of uh, any of that? Did they get time? Did they just get a fine? You know, I, I, I don't remember. I think they did some some jail time on it. Um, uh, um, there were four of them, um, and uh, I think they were fined, but uh, I don't recall that uh, at this point in time anymore. Mm -hmm. And then to one of them, to turn around down the road and say that uh, this was all set up by Vernon. <laughs> Jeez. Well, 
uh, yeah, you know, now, and you got to remember, you know, Vernon didn't go many places, and, and these people certainly did not come to Graceland at, at any time, and uh, Vernon didn't go out. He was in very poor health. There was always uh, somebody with him of some some sort. Uh, uh, either uh, uh, Sandy was with him, you know, his, his girlfriend at the time, mm-hmm. and nurse, or one of the security people, or, you know, would drive him or something like that. So, no, it, that didn't didn't happen. That's probably the most ludicrous story yeah. that I've heard. You know, somebody's just trying to make some extra money by telling some more lies about it. Yeah. The other thing I, I had read in your book, too, was um, they originally did not want any of you there when they took Elvis out of the mausoleum. Yeah, who? Um, uh, the um, cemetery people, when they took Elvis out of the oh, mausoleum. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they didn't want, they just wanted to take it out and have the, the uh, uh, funeral home just pick up the caskets, you know, and uh, that just wasn't going to happen. Uh, all in all, in, in the whole thing that, that went on over those days and, and uh, months and that, uh, the cemetery was was just the worst of uh, anybody that you could uh, ask for to try to, you know, everybody else was most helpful, the sheriff's department, the police department, the funeral home, the hospital, uh, everybody, you know. Uh-huh. But the cemetery people were just almost impossible to work with. You know, when we went out that front gate with the with the hearses, uh, everybody breathed a sigh of relief just because they were just so obnoxious about everything. Mm-hmm. So how did you get them to finally uh, let you to have somebody there? I mean, I know in your book it says that you changed your mind. How did you change your mind? Well, let's, let's put it this way. We made them an offer they couldn't refuse. Yeah, now you said if if there was any photos taken that uh, that there would be repercussions and... That's, that's correct. You know, that was one of the reasons that uh, we wanted our people there was because we we're always afraid that somebody would take uh, pictures of the casket or... or uh, with the casket being out in the open, uh, that it could be taken off someplace else, you know, and just disappear, and uh, that wasn't gonna gonna happen, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and that we would hold them responsible, uh, and uh, with a little help from uh, the sheriff's department, uh, they they saw the light. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Now. There was no other second viewing or anything like that. All they saw was casket, right? Because it was already sealed. Yep. Yeah. There was there, no there, other there was, viewings. Nothing. It was you no. Know, it was not opened uh, uh, at all. No. Yeah. You couldn't get it open if you wanted to. It sounds like. No. You, well, you, you you could, but it would take you a long time to to do that. Yeah. Now, uh, was there any other security uh, that was done at uh, Graceland besides the uh, the camera? I mean, I know there's something in the ground that you can't say, but was there anything else? Or you just stepped up security guards and stuff like that, or? Yeah, we did, we just stepped up the, the number of people that we had on duty at the time and and so forth, and uh, then we made preparations to open it up because one of the rules that you have to go by, uh, it's a state law that the cemeteries have to be open a certain uh, number of hours and you can't charge to go into the cemetery and, and so forth. So uh, when we opened it up for for um, fans to come in and walk through meditation gardens, we, uh, of course, had to uh, have more people on duty just so that we didn't get anybody defacing the uh, markers or the granite or anything like that. So you were already thinking back then that Graceland would be open to the fans? Well, yeah. Uh, it, Vernon had, had, was concerned about the finances because uh, it it's a lot of money to keep 
uh, Graceland going, and uh, I had worked out plans to uh, open because you couldn't charge to the cemetery, but right. uh, I had worked out plans that we could uh, open the racquetball court up and charge people like a buck to go into the racquetball court, and uh, another set of plans that uh, uh, would allow people to, to go through uh, portions of Graceland, which uh, they're kind of using those. I, it's the same basic plan that they are using today, whether they uh, adopted my plan or redid their own, I, I don't know, but I had drawn those up giving mm -hmm. Vernon the, the choice of the option of doing that and he ultimately decided he didn't he didn't want to do that. Now I, before somebody asks me, I thought I'd ask, has did Elvis ever have any idea or say that he would want to be buried in the meditation gardens? Uh, not to me and, and not to my knowledge, no. Uh, I I never heard that uh, you know, so maybe he discussed that with his father. I, I don't know, but uh, mm -hmm. not to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, you, did you work for Graceland for quite a while after that? <laughs> yeah, for another year, and maybe a year and a half after that, something like that. Um, I stayed on after I was died for approximately two years, give or take a little bit. And uh, then I left and uh, went back to California. Yeah. So, well, Dick, I thank you very much for doing this for me. Okay. You, know, you got it, sport. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. S send me a copy when you get it. I will. I will. All <laughs> okay, right. Okay, Joe. Bye-bye. All right. Talk to you. Bye.